Welcome to Student Spotlight Live, a live video podcast series on Facebook, YouTube and Instagram and created by students for students to support one another in the pursuit of success in our university journeys, communities and beyond. Last season, we had the COVID support series focused on helping support students through one of the most challenging times in our history. This season, we focus on the next chapter. In this episode, we talk about fair trade, specifically what is fair trade, what's been going on with fair trade at Middlesex, and who and what does fair trade benefit, as well as living a lifestyle where we choose the world we want. So a very good evening to all our dear viewers watching us live from all our platforms uh, to the Student Life Podcast. And today we are having our subject on discussion on fair trade. So we are joined by two amazing women over there. So why not? Why don't you guys introduce yourselves? Uh, yeah, I'm, my name is Jo Williamson and I am the Contracts Officer for Middlesex University. Um, I also lead on the uh, university's fair trade status, so anything to do with fair trade is all down to me at Middlesex um, and I've been there since 2016. Great, fantastic. Moving on. Hi, I'm Jo Millis and um, I work for the Fair Trade Foundation. Um, I lead our education programs, um, so uh, our Fair Trade University and College Award program that Joe referred to, um, but also some of our other areas of work as well. Great, and also I'm joined by my dear one co-host Lydia Matei. So you can see hi. Hello, everyone. <laughs> okay, so moving on. Uh, my first question is to to Joe Williamson. Uh, what has been going on with Fair Trade MDX? Um, so most recently, so from um, I think it was July, um, the university just received our newest Fair Trade Award status. Uh, because we're part of the Fair Trade Award scheme, um, we have to apply every two years, and every two years your award status gets renewed. So we had the renewal in July, and the reward scheme is based on a sort of tier um a tier process so you can sort of get one star two star three star and the star status is about the sort of i guess the amount of work that goes into what you're doing within your institution so i am very proud to say that we are a three star fair trade award university we are one of two across the uk that have this award status um we were on our last um award we had a two star um so we've actually gone up one so that's quite impressive and as I say it's basically about uh, that we're meeting the criteria of the fair trade standards that are set but also we kind of go a little bit above and beyond that so that's kind of most recently um, and off the back end of this award um, I was also asked to do a presentation for the World Fair Trade Symposium and that was, um, I was asked on behalf of a couple of Japanese universities that have just got a fair trade award status and they wanted to get a sort of a UK perspective um, from a, another sort of London university. And we were chosen because of, of our award status, which is a big, big deal for us and for me personally, because that's the first time we've been able to kind of reach out internationally. Um, and that was broadcast live across um, YouTube. Um, I had to be up very early for that one because it was obviously being uh, done from Japan. So it was quite an early one for us and a, a late one for them, but it was fabulous. I was very nervous, but it was really, really good. So that's kind of what's sort of been going on this year. So we are having really good things going on on Fair Trade and Middlesex. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Thanks to people like you who actually make this thing really amazing in our university. Oh, thank you. Um, probably because um, we we um, started a discussion mentioning fair trade so many times, and um, uh, obviously I I had to do a little bit of research before, uh, but I'm sure 
a lot of uh, people from our audience probably they they heard or they know roughly mm. what's fair trade but um maybe we can just um give them a, a hint of what exactly is fair mm. trade um joe joe millis yeah please. sure um so fair trade um and and to try and unpick the confusion i'll make a difference uh, here between fair trade two words and fair trade one word with a capital f but fair trade is basically a simple way of making a difference to the lives of the people who grow or create or mine the things that we love and it's a trading system that um it works to um you know make life better for farmers to enable them to capture more of the value of their products to plan for the future and to have a bit more security now fair trade two words as a concept is more broad than fair trade one word capital um the principles are the same the principle of, of fair trade is about returning more value to those who grow the products that we love um and um ensuring that they have more power in the in their supply chains that they're able to command a better price um to work their way out of poverty with dignity now a fair trade one word capital f um actually means that it is a product or in the case of the award it's a program that um comes out of a fair trade system that we are part of at the fair trade foundation so we are one of uh 20 odd organizations that are in market countries so like the uk france denmark japan um canada australia i could go on um and we're all part of um one big system that includes us and also our producer networks across africa asia and latin america uh we have this umbrella body for fair trade international and we have um one set of standards so you've probably seen our little green and blue mark little fair trade mark which is common right across our system so if you were in nairobi airport you can buy coffee with a fair trade mark on it and it's the same fair trade mark and it's the same standards so um anything that has that those fair trade, that's met those fair trade standards or programs that come from our system um is fair trade one word capital f <laughs> thank you <laughs> Thank you. That's an amazing answer. I mean, it just sheds a lot of light on uh, on these concepts because, yeah, we we hear everywhere around us. We started to, uh, but yeah, it was important to just uh, clarify what exactly that is. Yeah. Thank you for that. Yeah, definitely. Moving on. Uh, so this is again to Joe Mills. Uh, what products could be? considered or categorized under the fair trade? Yeah. So um, products that you might see a fair trade mark on, I think there are something like four and a half thousand products available in the UK um, with a fair trade mark on. But obviously they broadly fall under certain categories. Um, and that's, you know, the ones for which fair trade standards exist. So obviously the most commonly seen ones are tea, coffee, bananas, um, sugar, um, flowers, and my personal favorite, chocolate, um, but also cotton, uh, fresh fruit. Um, there are standards for fair trade gold. Um, I mean, almost with, with only a few exceptions, really, most of it is food and drink. Um, almost all of it is agricultural, you know, stuff. Okay, so they're consumables. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but there are a couple of exceptions being gold, cotton, um, there's there's a textile standard for other mm -hmm. textiles um, and um, oh, sports balls that are, are stitched to fair trade standards, but the majority is food and drink. And it might just be worth me just quickly hopping in here just to sort of say in terms of Middlesex University, part of the standards that we have to adhere to is to ensure that we have got fair trade products available on campus because it's important for students and people in general to ensure that they have a choice. So you can buy a fair trade coffee or you can buy a standard coffee, fair trade tea, we've got fair trade cotton, 
through our student union merchandise um, and we've got lo lots of lots of chocolate in terms of fair trade as well so we do always try to ensure that we kind of cover that at Middlesex so again once students know about it they can then go off and go great okay I'm going to go and purchase myself some fair trade coffee. Mm -hmm. Of course. So what Sorry. Yeah, please. Fine. <laughs> it's, it's, fine, it's, fine, it's fine. It's absolutely fine. Sorry. Um, I wanted to ask, um, who's actually, uh, uh, who benefits from fair trade? Uh, obviously, the the answer could be, um, yeah, the, uh, well, the, the, the producers, but um, I'm sure it's not just the producers. It's probably um, a wide range of um, um, social segments, I would say. So, who, who, who benefits from, from fair trade? So from the point of view of products, um, the, the products that bear the fair trade mark, um, you know, because this it, it, trading fairly is a concept that we need right across wherever our products come from, um, whether it's, you know, from uh, rural Africa or rural Cumbria or whatever. But with the fair trade mark, the product, um, that can achieve the mark are from the global south, so um, from Africa, Asia, and Latin America, um, and predominantly smallholder farmers. Not not entirely, but the majority of the products um, are farmed by families on small family farms that have maybe a hectare that rely on the family's labour, um, and they sell into, you know, often to traders and into complex supply chains but um, you know their products end up going off somewhere else into the ether to be processed and sold um, often in Europe. So um, largely that's the, the case. There are some products which are on much bigger scale farms and, and plantation type things, for example, tea. Um, but in terms of the benefits, well, I, I will probably say that we all benefit because also enshrined in fair trade are environmental standards. Um, and that's something that we all benefit from. And I think we all benefit from, you know, um, the idea of exploitation. Um, I don't think it's just the exploited that are uh, disadvantaged by that. I think actually we're all, um, we all benefit from knowing that the things we're buying aren't harming other people um and we all benefit from working towards you know striving for greater security and equality for um people marginalized people no matter where they are in the world but yeah directly if you're talking about you know financial and social benefits it's producers and there can be people further up the supply chain potentially as well um that might you know benefit in terms of their role in a in a cooperative or in a farm, um, but it's it's largely about producers, and then there are those other notable exceptions we talked about, for example, artisanal miners for gold and things, um, and those that stitch um, sports balls. But there aren't lots and lots of products in which manufacture is covered, um, largely farming. Yeah. Um, Thank you. So my next question is uh, what does what else does fair trade do outside the fair pay um well actually the fair trade standards are supposed to cover you know not just pay but also social and environmental um standards as well so you know if you if you get the chance to meet one of our producers and you asked me about the difference fair trade has made. Mm. And I know Joe has hosted a couple at Middlesex, for example. Um, and often, funnily enough, it's not the money that they talk about. It's it's things such as having a greater understanding of their where their product goes, um, learning more about how to increase the quality, um, having a greater part, being treated as more of a partner, um, you know, being treated as more of a business person and and um the standards are there to protect um farmers and to help them to um acquire the kind of the knowledge and the skills that they need to be able to trade um with you know with traders and companies and things um on the more even footing so you know there, there there's lots of things that will protect them socially so um 
you know, things about child labor, child labor is not allowed in fair trade supply chains. Um, there's a lot there that, that ensures women are able to take their part, which is a really big deal in some of the countries that our products are sourced from. Um, I was lucky enough that I visited cocoa farmers in Cote d'Ivoire last year and an awful lot of women there, you know, they just, they've not been able to buy their own land. There have been a handful who've inherited land, you know, if their husbands have died and that sort of thing. But that isn't a given. So often if the husband dies, the land will pass straight on to a brother or a son um, and they're left with nothing. So, you know, fair trade standards ensure that women are able to participate um, in the cooperative. They're able to have a voice. They've got their own um, specific gender committees. Um, and that they can be represented um, on on uh, the kind of governance structures and that sort of thing. So there's so much across there that's not just about the money, but it's about how they work, who takes part, um, their practices to make sure that they're safe and that they can protect their environment. Um, I um, have a question. <laughs> um, basically because we had the conversation so far and I uh, just uh, the back of my mind um, and it's for Joe Williamson um, because we were all there involved in the uh, Middlesex uh, in a way, way or another I'm a student but ob obviously I'm interested about the um, whole uh, community um, mm. and um, I I'd like to um, um, to know how what's the easiest and um, the best way to bring awareness to make everyone um, okay, not everyone in the Middlesex University, but how can we uh, everyone. reach students? <laughs> yeah, everyone, okay. It's a really good question. We, um, and... Raise awareness um, and how can we um, make people more conscious about fair trade? Um, mm. Yeah, no, that's that's a that's a really good question, and and I try and do as much as I possibly can. Um, basically, what we do is we try to incorporate as many events as we can that has a fair trade element. So, as we were talking about earlier, I have a fair trade fair uh, that I put on campus every year, and that's usually at the start of Fair Trade Fortnight. And Fair Trade Fortnight is two weeks every year that all organizations, institution, institutions, churches, etc., all have a two-week kind of window to really ramp up the awareness by putting on events, doing uh, stuff online, all sorts of different things. But at Middlesex, as well as those two weeks during Fair Trade Fortnight, I tried to kind of almost jump on bandwagons of other events because in my mind, Fair Trade wasn't just being pigeonholed into oh it's just about fair trade and fair trade products this is has a much wider scope so i was introducing and all i did was just i did a um, a little stall and i gave out free fair trade tea and coffee but i'd be at um, a health and well-being event or a mental health event or um religious uh, interfaith events so I was kind of like attaching myself to other events to kind of just broaden that scope to say, listen, it's not just about fair trade and fair trade products. We're talking about the fairness of people and having the same opportunities that we all have um, and having that across um, other sort of countries that don't have that possibility. Uh, mental health is a massive part of, of fair trade and being able to support farmers on that sense, as well as obviously buying products, etc. So uh, for me, it was about just getting myself out there at Middlesex, making people much more aware and then hoping that those people that I spoke to took something away from that and sort of thought, do you know what, if all it means is just I have to buy a fair trade coffee every now and again, or if I go shopping, I'm going to put five items in my basket that fair trade items, that's you doing your contribution. That's you being a part of this wider thing. And then obviously for us at Middlesex, it would be great if more students sort of 
wanted to form a fair trade society and start doing their own little events and getting involved that way. You know, you don't have to wait for events going on on campus or even especially in the situation that we're in now where everything is online. Do yourself a little fair trade debate. We had one a couple of weeks ago. You know, just get students involved, get people talking about it, I think is, the, is one of the biggest things. Um, Thank you. So, Thank like, you. Uh, just a follow-up question to what uh, you said. Uh, you told, like, okay, nowadays things are happening online and students can do it. So, in, a, in an event where, like, students would need a sort of, like, okay, there are there'll be people who are pretty much shy enough to open out and talk big things like this, because these all are, like, very sensitive topics also to be handled with. So in such a scenario, will the university give a sort of uh, support saying that, okay, you guys, uh, like you will university back them to say what sort of like get their sort of an argument or sort of their event in place in such an event? What's that? Sorry, I missed that last bit. Okay, so it's sort of like, uh, will the university will sort of like give a push to the students to, okay, you got uh, if you're having something like this of an idea about fair trade, you mm. gotta do it. You gotta yeah. figure it out. Yeah, definitely. I mean, most recently, one of the biggest achievements is that the, the university is going through, um, so every university has like a strategic plan. So okay. Middlesex University are at the start of writing um, all kind of discussion consultation of our 10-year plan. And a big part of the 10-year plan is about health, well-being and the environment, sustainability and fair trade forms a part of that. So I think that and that's a big achievement for us to be able to actually have this as part of the Middlesex strategic plan. So absolutely, if there are students that are out there that are saying, OK, well, look, I, I actually feel completely opposite about fair trade. OK, great. Tell me about it. Let's get it online. Let's do a debate about it. Let people hear about it. And, and again, as I say, you're talking about it. So that's the first thing. Um, but there are loads of opportunities for students to get involved, for sure, even if they disagree. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. The debate is always, oh, I love it, always a welcome. Okay, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, moving on. So, uh, how does the fair trade impact actually the environment? Um, so, uh, fair trade has, you know, uh, economic, social, and environmental principles at its core, and. Um, I think at this time in particular, we need to talk even more about the environmental side of this because um, farmers in the global south um, who have often done very little to contribute to the climate crisis are the ones who are really, really feeling it. And they're often the ones who are least well placed to adapt to it. So sadly, barely a month goes by when we don't hear from some a producer group that they've had a cyclone or a flood or a drought that's you know devastated their crops and these are often um people who just can't they've not got the resilience to bounce back because they live on very small incomes and um as you know if you haven't got a huge amount of money left over if you're worrying about feeding your family paying for your medicines ensuring your next um you know about your next set of uh, inputs you've got your seeds you've got your whatever fertilizers it's very hard to plan for anything else and firstly you know one of the things that fair trade does is that it enables farmers to build on that safety net a little bit more um we've got quite a few producer groups who have put you know adapting to climate crisis very much front and center in what they do um, you know, there are lots of groups who are finding that the, the temperature range where they are is, is not suitable anymore for their crops, they're losing lots of crops and that sort of thing. So on the one hand, fair trade helps them to adapt. They are using their fair trade premium um, to, uh, you know, work on best practice um, farming techniques, um, on doing things. So, for example, I, I visited some tea farmers in Kenya and they'd been investing their premium in um, water management programs and tree planting. Uh, the trees slow down the water when they get these really heavy rainfalls, so it slows the water down so it's less likely to wash away the soil. 
um, this sort of thing. They've planted trees that will help slow the course of water around rivers as well. So they'll suck up water, but not too much. Um, so it's helping farmers to adapt. But also most people, most farmers want to farm in a way that is going to preserve their environment for the future. You know, most of them would rather farm in a way that's going to preserve biodiversity and going to make sure yeah, that yeah. their farm isn't eroded. But again, to do the best possible thing, you need to have a safety net. And the standards will help farmers to do that. So, for example, they can't use the worst, the most toxic chemicals within fair mm -hmm. trade. So they have to stop using those. A lot of farmers, once they become fair trade certified, they start working towards being organic. Um, and they do that within the system. I went through a very exciting um, vermiculture project in India. So um, like massive shed of worms that would eat their way through weeds and cow pats um, and create this delicious, I mean, it was brilliant, this delicious <laughs> fertilizer, which then gets put into like a, a giant blender and sprayed all over the, the tea plants, you know. Um, that's probably how most people would prefer to farm you know, um, using natural organic products from the waste that they can source around rather than chemicals. But again, people need a safety net to be able to do those sorts of things. So um, Fairtrade very much is helping both the, you know, going towards best practice and adapting to the things that people are finding a problem with the climate crisis. Uh, it seems like when uh, Jo was actually talking about her uh, time in India, she was next level excited. <laughs> Oh, totally. I mean, what's not to love about worms? It's just fantastic. Probably, um, um, I, I honestly believe that these um, traditional, I would say traditional methods of growing plants, for instance, probably have, have um, actually impact on, a, on the taste, I would say. Uh, probably the products taste better. Um, whether it... it I, I don't know now in, in um, all the retailers uh, we can see the organic products um we don't know actually uh, well obviously if it's it says organic we we have to believe it's organic but um, um i've experienced actually uh, there's no difference in taste or anything but if you eat a vegetable or an apple um from a farm it definitely has a different taste and probably um the traditional methods of growing those plants has an impact um, mm. on the taste as well, I would say. Uh, but yeah, that's just a, <laughs> maybe a personal opinion. Um, I wanted to ask, um, okay, so maybe there are people who are actually a uh, producer or um, even for us would be very useful to know um, what's the actually, just in a few words maybe, <laughs> what's, what are the steps of including a producer in a, um, in, a, in a fair trade scheme and to be fair trade certified? What are um, they, yeah, those, well, those steps? So, sorry. What, what, what are the, the yeah, <laughs> literally the steps that they need to take in order to be included? Yeah. Um, well, unfortunately, if, you're, if your listeners are in the Middlesex area, um, viewers, they are not going to be eligible for fair trade certification, I'm afraid, <laughs> at this stage, um, because it is just at this time in our, um, you know, evolution, it is in the global south. Um, but often what happens is that, um, you know, I think most small producers would jump at the chance to be fair trade certified and be able to sell their product on fair trade terms. It's not just getting certified, it's then having a buyer who pays the fair trade price and premium. Um, so obviously they only really get into the certification. Um, there's no point in them getting certified if they don't have a market to an extent. So often what happens is it's within an existing supply chain. So often a company uh, will want to convert their supply chain to fair trade. So they will often carry on working with existing farmers that they already use and those farmers will work their way through the fair trade standards. Um, the standards they have sort of the, the standards that they come in on. And then within three years, they have progression you know, to, to move on and do other things. 
Um, but so often they'll already be in a supply chain and it will be, you know, because it's a partnership between those farmers and who they sell to. Um, the company they sell to have to be willing to pay the fair trade price and the fair trade premium in order for the mark to go on the product. So it has to be done in partnership and, and therefore often it's, it's an existing um, relationship, but they then work through the fair trade standards, get certified, move to selling some proportion of their products on fair trade terms. Um, and we have our producer networks on the ground who uh, who will assist them to work through those fair trade standards. You know, they can, in some places, they can access quite, you know, really good training and that sort of thing to meet those standards. Once they are there, they then get audited. We have um, a separate body that does the audit. So they are independent um, and they will audit them to make sure they're up to scratch. So that's what you get with the independent certification of fair trade is knowing that they've met those standards. Um, and then they that you know happens regularly that they have an audit. Yeah, um, I believe. Uh, um, sorry, Arjun. Go on, go on, go on. <laughs> fine, fine. Um, I, I wanted to ask um, Joe Joe Williamson uh, um, because again we we go back to the students mainly. They mm. are probably um, people who's gonna they're gonna have. Um, companies they're gonna have startups they're gonna have all these sort of things um and uh, because um most of them they're they're young people they have the energy to raise awareness and they probably um it's very good to rely on young generations uh when we speak about these kind of things um i wanted to it's like i wanted to make a link between the fact that for instance students they uh Everyone knows that students don't have money, so um, they they're looking for uh, all sorts of discounts. They're looking for um, you know to buy. Even the the, the uh, university um, offers all kind of discounts and and ways for students to to um, um, to buy cheaper products for their studies, for their life, for their well being. Um, I wanted to ask, um, what's the impact impact of um, fair trade on product prices and um when we in in the middle sex middle sex university when we sell for instance uh coffees fair trade coffees are they more 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 expensive than the normal coffees that would be a, a like a very a closed question but um it's linked to the fact that how students will feel within to promote fair trade um based on the, the prices of the fair trade products mm -hmm. if that makes sense yeah. so yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, so, well, in terms of the university, so um, the price is no different in terms as if you was going to buy a bar of chocolate at Middlesex, it's going to be the same price as you buy a bar of chocolate elsewhere. Um, just because it's a fair trade chocolate, it doesn't make any difference. There's no, in terms of Middlesex, there's no additional cost on top or anything like that. We do actually have uh, various different coffee offers across campus, all different prices. Um, and one of our fair trade coffees tend to be a bit cheaper than some of the um, sort of more brand known coffees um, across Middlesex. So there are sort of cheaper options and it's also ethically sourced. So it's also a fair trade coffee as well. So in terms of Middlesex, there's no sort of difference if you was going to buy a coffee or a bar of chocolate or even a banana, if you won't notice the difference between it's going to be a fair trade or it isn't, there's there's no difference. But on the wider scheme, Joe Millis probably has a better... Uh... Yeah. <laughs> Please, Joe. Um, <laughs> um, I, and it's a, comp it's a complex question. Because obviously, in some cases, we're, you know, we're talking about returning more value to the farmers. And, um, and I think people will often think that fair trade is more expensive because sometimes what you see is it's the more expensive brands that are fair trade. But that isn't necessarily the case. I mean, the thing with price that you pay is that it bears no relation whatsoever to what the farmers receive. So if you look at a banana, you can buy a banana for about 11 or 12p in a supermarket. You can buy virtually the same banana for 50p at Press a Manger. Now, whether you paid 11 or 12p in the supermarket or 50p in Pret actually doesn't 
make any difference to the farmer. It's not like the farmer got 40p more because your your banana was bought in prep. It, it, you know, it, you got so much, you, there's so many things that affect what the price is at retail, um, including the premises that, that it's sold from, um, especially things like bananas, supermarkets use them as loss leaders. So they're selling their bananas cheaply and making it up on toilet rolls or pasta or something. So um, it's, I think it's really important to sort of separate this whole idea of retail price from price the farmer gets. Um, because for example, somewhere like Sainsbury's sell their, banana, their basics bananas as fair trade. Now, how do they do that? Only Sainsbury's know where they make up the prices of various things, but especially in supermarkets, it's really not uncommon for them to sell things at a price that doesn't reflect what they've paid for it. And, and in a way, that's a problem. But they sell certain things to get people through the doors because bananas are one of the products in this country that are most frequently bought. You know, they're in that kind of sta staple basket of top 10 products or whatever. You know, people buy lots of bananas. Um, so it's really difficult because the price we pay has no relation. You know, you can buy the same packet of chocolate buttons on special, the big packs, for a pound at the corner shop and they're two pound fifty um at the shop the other direction um so it's a really hard thing to say are fair trade products more expensive uh yeah, that's like how, how long is a piece of string mm -hmm. supply chains get restructured things are sold a different price in different premises in different chains whether it's retail or wholesale whether they're making their their markup on you know a, a cup of coffee um the, the important thing is that that mark guarantees that the farmer got a certain price for it and how that supply chain has been structured to return value to the farmer uh, will vary from supply chain to supply chain in some places what they've done is they've cut out actors in the supply chain they've cut out those who bought and sold on and just made money by that you know it could be all manner of different things, but no, they're not necessarily. You can still buy basics products in lots of supermarkets that have a fair trade mark on. Similarly, or, or I guess on the other hand, you're probably likely to find some of the very high quality products that are fair trade. Um, so no, you should be able to find products at every price point. And I, I think it's really important for us to understand the price you pay at retail just doesn't doesn't bear any relationship you know it's the same no matter what you buy if you go into a top end restaurant and you buy a really expensive steak it doesn't mean that animal's been you know <laughs> treated any better than anything else it and this is why we rely on marks like the fair trade mark and other marks about ethical um, standards in other products um, to give us those answers about the provenance of the products that we're buying mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, moving on. Uh, okay, so um, let's talk about in the corporate world, or well, let's talk. Uh, let's say let's increase the level to the company's level. Okay. So, um, what are company? What is the company's drive uh, for taking on fair trade? Um, well, shall I take this? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I can kind of come in on the middle sex side. I'll let you go. Yeah, sure. um, well, I think, uh, again, that's very varied answer. I'll try and be a bit more concise. Um, I think for some companies, it's very much embedded in their values. Um, so you look at some of the companies. So, for example, Ben and Jerry's have a fair trademark on loads of their ice cream. But they've Yay. always... Yeah, yeah, I know, right? Yeah. Like, oh, free. You can eat as much as you like because it's all fair <laughs> trade. Um, that's my philosophy. Um, so I, I think for them, it's very much chimes with their social values. They have this idea of like linked prosperity right across their supply chains, you know, happy producers, happy staff. So for some, it's about their values. Um, for some, it's undoubtedly trying to reflect back the values of the consumers that they want to attract. So that they know, in you know, their brand identity is about doing less harm. Um, for some of them, it's just a very pragmatic decision, and and I think we see that in things like cocoa, for example. Um, cocoa is massively under threat 
Um, in West Africa, a large amount of the farmers are 60 plus. Their kids will say they don't want to farm cocoa. Climate is having you know massive impact on cocoa farms and companies know that if they don't make cocoa farming more appealing, make it more sustainable, that in future they're going to run into problem because you know their companies are built on cocoa. So again, I think it's one of those complex questions that it could be a range of things. It could be about their values, it could be about attracting certain consumers, it could be about safeguarding for the future, it could be about it being the right thing to do, it could also be about the fact that their consumers put pressure on them. Um, they're very receptive to hearing from the people that they want to sell to. Um, it does work wonders, people asking them for fair trade. So let's know what's the Middlesex, uh, what angle of this? So my angle, Arjun, is basically I decided that I wanted fair trade, the sort of fair trade accreditation for Middlesex because we're basically a house that has all these students that are our future. And, you know, being an institution, fair trade is kind of, it's going to help to bring a societal change if you're educating students about fair trade and what they can do in the future to help support the environment as well as protecting farmers. So that's kind of, that, that was one side. And then the other side was just because everything that fair trade stands for is everything that I feel quite passionate about and that we should all feel very passionate about. And that is basically collaboration, support, fairness and treating everybody equally. Um, and the principles of fair trade are exactly that. And then to be able to kind of factor in fair trade and oh, and by the way, while you're doing all of these things, you can purchase fair trade products and then be able to do that for farmers that are struggling just kind of puts the cherry on the cake for me. And I think it kind of fits very nicely with fair tra um, with Middlesex and Middlesex standards and Middlesex ethos, which is very much about fairness, equality, and giving students opportunity to better their futures. What, what a student from Middlesex should do to become a fair trade activist? What's the first step? Yeah, I mean, there's loads of things that we can do. So within Middlesex, you can, first of all, come to me. Um, and then you can also, you can start, like I've, I've been trying to put together like a fair trade society for a number of years. The trouble we have at Middlesex with a lot of universities, your students come, your students go. So I might get chatting to a really passionate student that's kind of in their master's or in their final year and then they're gone. So we we kind of have a bit of a conveyor belt of students, but you know, all of them are lovely and all of them are very passionate, but it's having the time to be able to do that. So you can either do something within Middlesex while you're there, and that's kind of be part of the events that we do or put together your own fair trade society. I can support with being able for them to be able to put events on and things like that, or in your kind of day to day, you can kind of do other things like if you have a part-time job, you can perhaps encourage the organisation that you work for to perhaps buy fair trade products and bring fair, fair, fair trade products into the like teas and coffees into their kitchen or, you know, encouraging colleagues, encouraging other students. Oh, did you buy a fair trade coffee? Did you know it? Fair? You know, just talk about it. Share that knowledge. Share what it is and how people can help. Being able to help is the simplest piece of information that you can give. It's like, you know, all you've got to do is find out a little bit about it, talk about it, and then just go out and buy yourself some fair trade products. Easy peasy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, definitely, definitely we've got... Like... Okay, okay. I'm sorry. Okay. We're keen to uh, speak because the, the subject is very in interesting, interesting and very <laughs> well, important. We have to do so a part two. <laughs> probably we don't, we're not going to have enough time to, to debate everything uh, we, we plan to, but um, yeah, maybe we... we we're going to do a second session because it's yeah, really it's lovely good. and um, we got so session. much information from today's session oh, um, thank you and much. I, I want to ask you one more question to both of you guys i just have to ask one more question so for fair trade uh, like uh, what is fair trade basically going to expand like i know it's already a big thing but to, uh, to take a step further what is being done 
Um, so just really quickly at Middlesex, I mean, there's only so much that I can do because, I mean, I don't I don't know, it's to kind of explain to sort of looking after fair trade in Middlesex it is pretty much just myself. So um, I'm the one that has to kind of make sure that all the criteria is met. I'm the one that goes out and encourages people to get involved and do this and trying to get fair trade sort of talked about in lectures, etc. So, I mean, I kind of have a long term plan. Um, so the fact that we've achieved having fair trade mentioned in the uh, Middlesex strategic plan is probably one of our biggest achievements thus far. And then it's kind of just kind of seeing where that sort of takes us. Being able to get more student engagement would be a really good long term thing to be able to expand a bit more, I think. Um, so come on, students, where are you? Get in touch. And shall I take that from my side as well? Um, of course. Yeah, um, well, uh, we are always, there's many things that we do within the, the foundation. Um, we obviously working with the public to raise awareness. It's so important that consumers are asking for fair trade, both in their shops and also putting pressure on their favourite brands, asking them why they aren't fair trade. Um, we also work with different companies, you know, building relationships up with them. Um, and with uh, policymakers. Um, so there's so much stuff that, that we do. We very much rely on the support of consumers and fans and campaigners and people like Joe, who's just absolute force um, driving this forward and getting the message out there to other people because we're actually quite small. Um, so yeah, the, the main thing you can do is to tell other people and demand fair trade and get in contact with Joe at Middlesex or with us at the foundation for more information. I think it's just like it's That's a matter crazy. of a call or you guys are just away from a matter of an email. Yeah. Right? Yep. We're waiting. <laughs> we can, we can so, give you our emails, so pass on. Yeah, of course. That's great stuff. So guys, uh, really, these people are really approachable, guys. So. If you if you have a big idea or something of you got to do with fair trade, please reach out to them. They are lovely people. They won't uh, like eat you out. They are two sweet people. <laughs> uh, so uh, pitch your ideas. They will actually help you out with, and you might sometimes turn out the product to be such an amazing thing. The idea could sometimes turn out could revolutionize. I'll say, oh, that's uh, sort of a very heavy word. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but see, it could it could it could be it could turn out to be something really good though. Um, so I so I think that's a wrap for us for today. Uh, thank you so much, Joe. Thank you so much, the other Joe. Okay, I'm not gonna call you guys your full names. <laughs> <laughs> thank you both the Joes. Thank you. And uh, thank you to all our listeners for tuning in. And you guys could watch this again if you have missed it. Like uh, you got we are, we are still available on all platforms. So no worries. Uh, so thank you so much. And don't uh, forget to check your products, guys. Yes, don't please. forget to check the products for fair trade. Yeah. We are in hard times, so support the fair trade products. So support them and let's make the world a better place. <laughs> yeah, with that heart. Question. <laughs> <laughs> so with that heart, we are going to end today's session. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Welcome to Student Spotlight Live, a live video podcast series on Facebook, YouTube and Instagram and created by students for students to support one another in the pursuit of success in our university journeys, communities and beyond. Last season, we had the COVID support series focused on helping support students through one of the most challenging times in our history. This season, we focus on the next chapter. In this episode, we talk about fair trade, specifically what is fair trade, what's been going on with fair trade at Middlesex, and who and what does fair trade benefit, as well as living a lifestyle where we choose the world we want. <laughs>